Hello and welcome to Sippin' Tea with D. My name is Dana, the owner and operator of Pure Sheet Boutique. And I'm here today to do a webinar series for you on how to open or establish a either a brick and mortar boutique or an online boutique. So the information that I have for you today is going to be a maybe a 10 to 11 part series on how to go ahead and establish either your brick and mortar or your online or just a product and service based um, business. So we're just going to do business in general because this ideas can work regardless if you're opening up a, a storefront or online store or if you have a service based um, business. So welcome, sit back, grab your tea because this is called Sipping Tea with D. And grab a pen and a paper because we're going to spill all the tea on how to open up a business. All right. So for the first topic on the establishing a business. Huh? First tea on the docket. Okay. Well, the first tea on the docket is um, the discovery aspect of your business. So before you sit down and you decide on what business you or you have the idea in your head that you want to open up a business. So the first thing you want to do when you're opening up a business is deciding on what type of business that you want to open. So whether it's going to be a product based or a service based business. And of course, what I mean by the product based is meaning you know you're selling a merch uh, item, whether it be you know cell phone accessories, clothing, hair, makeup, lashes, things of those natures. And the service based business is like if you're a makeup artist and you're selling your artistry, more so like you're coming to do a service, or you are a beautician, or you mow lawns, or you know whatever it is that you do where you're you, you're um, billing them for a service that you provide. Um, once you decide on the area in which you want to uh, set up your business or the business that you want to start, then it is into actually organizing or structuring your business. Um, first thing first is you want to find a good name for your business. Um, you, there's all kinds of services online that will allow you to help you with naming your business. Or if you have a name already in mind, just go ahead and use that name. The first thing you want to do is for whatever state that you live in, you want to check and make sure that no one else is using that name in your state. So the best place to do that is to go to your local secretary of state or equivalent to a secretary of state in, in which the area in which you live. For here in Georgia, you want to go to the Georgia secretary of state website, do a business search, and then type that name inside of the business search and see if it's able to be used. Because you don't want to go, you know, marketing your business and somebody else has your name, honey. You'll be very upset that they're getting all your accolades for all the work that you done put in and you can't even use the name. So, definitely you want to go ahead and make sure that you um, can use the name legally. Because you don't want to get sued for using somebody else's name on top of that. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is decide on your actual structure. So what type of business would you like to have? Would you like to have an LLC, a INC, are you a partner or an incorporation? <laughs> are you a partnership? Are you a, what do you call it, a nonprofit or a for-profit? Um, however you're going to be structuring your business, um, you want to decide on how you want to do that. For just the traditional or the basic business, especially if you're doing a, a service or a product-based business, the LLC and the incorporations are your most two common structures to um, establish a business with. They both have both unique structures and only you would know what's going to work for you based off of your business. And um, later on in this series, we will dive into the difference between the two, but just, just the break of brief breakdown of what you need to do to in order to open up the business or at least to get your business structured. Um, the next thing you want to do once you've decided that uh, you already know your name, you already know that or that you can actually use the name and then you decide on the structure that you want to do, the next thing to do is to decide on how you're going to market your business. So marketing could either be doing it on your website you know or opening up your brick and mortar or 
selling via offer up or any of the different outlets that there is to you know sell your business or sell your product or your service um you want to have all that worked out on how you're going to do that before you actually get put it into motion so if you're going to do let's say for me i own a boutique or a clothing store online so for me i wanted to do everything online because i already had the brick and mortar store and i knew what that was going to entail and I didn't want to have to necessarily go through that whole process with everything and tell with that. But let's say for the online aspect of it, you want to decide on who's going to be hosting your, your website. So you want there's tons of web hosters, you know, people that host websites out there. I know some of the top ones are like GoDaddy. You also have Shopify, Wix, Big Cartel. And, you know, the list goes on and on. But you want to make sure that when you are selecting who is going to be the one hosting your website is that they offer everything that you need to be able to host your website. Because you don't want to, you know, have open up this website, spread it to the world, and then you for, they don't even offer a shopping cart with that. You're like, okay, well, now I have to go somewhere to get a shopping cart. Or they don't offer a payment portal, so now you have to go somewhere else to get a payment portal. So you just want to make sure that um, whoever you are hosting your website has everything you need that is affordable for you based off of whatever your budget is at that time, as well as for the brick and mortar. Um, the brick and mortar is a little bit more intricate because there's a lot of things that go into the brick and mortar. Um, with that, you definitely want to get a good location. Location, location, location is always the key when you're um, opening up a business, especially when it's a product-based business. Um, cause you definitely don't want to be somewhere where the traffic is not cause you're going to have to literally spend a bulk of your business, your money on advertisement to get people to the store, which you're going to have to do that anyway, but it's a little bit more harder when it's not any, uh, where, anywhere where anybody can even see it through the public. You want to make it to where it's visible. So you have to do and not as much marketing as you normally would have if you didn't have a visible business, um, and not to mention that, then it's a little bit more expensive to do a um, brick and mortar type business because you have the overhead. With the overhead, of course, you have you know your 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 rent, the comps that come with that, because you're gonna have to do you know your insurances. So not only have you have your rent, you have your lights, you have your um, internet, so you can be able to run your um, credit card processor, and you have you know maybe if you have. A, 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 a what do you call it a, a POS system you're going to have the fees associated with that unless you just have a regular cash register which is fine there are fees associated with the um, merchant account also you know the fees that you're going to need to pay to constantly bring stock into your business hangers um, the, you know the list goes on and on when you have a actual brick and mortar business but we'll get more into that as well um in a later topic when it comes down to you know your office set up your fixtures and things of that nature so that'll be a little down a little further um and then once you decide on who you're going to be marketing or who you're going to be hosting or you know where you're going to be located or whatever the next thing is you're going to have to worry about is your marketing aspect of it how are you going to market your business are you going to be exclusively online are you going to be a, a email based are you going to be i guess more so a social media type base are you going to be only selling or introducing your products to instagram are you going to use facebook are you going to use snapchat or whatever the outlets are to be able to market your business are you going to go straight old school and do like the mail marketing or door-to-door -door sales or you know however it is that is feasible for you um, but of course you want to do what's what's working for today because not to say that the old school methods don't work but you definitely want to be you want to be successful you want to kind of keep up with what's going on now that's what and business is kind of important to kind of keep up with the joneses in a sense because if you know everybody's out doing it this way and you're doing it this way more you're probably going to get less traction than if you were to do it um necessarily with using a social media not to say that you wouldn't be successful it just makes it a little bit harder because you definitely want to continue to go with what the flow is now um and then the next thing we want to talk about is your inventory 
So if you're going to be running a, let's say a clothing store or a hair store or online or whatever it is, you want to make sure that the inventory that you have is quality product because there's nothing to kill your business faster than getting some inferior product. Um, you know, people will, they won't necessarily talk about you when you're doing good, but when you're doing bad, they're going to let everybody and their mama know that you did something bad when it comes to, you know, a store or anything, you know. They may tell one person, but they're going to tell 10 people for the, this, you know, when they have a problem with the situation. They're not going to come and tell you. They're going to tell 10 other folks to not shop with you or whatever it is. So you want to make sure that before you put that market, your product on the market, that you are actually pleased with it and because you are actually building a brand and you want to build repeat customers and you want them customers to continue to shop with you from years and years and years to come or until you, you know, you no longer have your business or you decide to move on or whatever it is. The next thing that we're going to be discussing in our series is the uh, bookkeeping aspect of it. How are you going to track what you have going on? Um, how are you going to track your merchandise? How are you going to track your your sales? How are you going to track just everything in regards to your business and running a successful business? You got to kind of know the interworkings. So you want to know how much are you spending? How much are you making with this business? You want to know a little bit of everything about the business when it comes to the finances. If you have a brick and mortar, you want to make sure that you're um, tracking how you, how much you're paying out on your rent or your supplies or whatever it is. You just want to make sure that you have a good bookkeeping strategy in place. And you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to do it. There are some bookkeeping um outlooks out there that you can use the one that i'm more familiar with is quicken or quickbooks um but you can do something like just a spreadsheet on excel and it's, it's free well i'm not gonna say it's free but mo if you have your computer software that offers the excel you could definitely use that and you can set it up and there's a lot of things here on youtube that will allow you to go ahead and set it up to where it'll work for your business especially when you're starting out you want to try to keep your cost down as much as possible where you can and that will be one that you can always use to um to keep your con your cost down a little bit more the next thing that we also on the web series that we'll be discussing is the actual office setup or the um store setup or however it is and just knowing where to go and purchase your store fixtures at a discount and knowing where you can diy it and where you can be able to um purchase it at, at a discount if need be um store fixtures are very 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 costly um especially when you're doing a well any kind of business and you are having to purchase fixtures um they are definitely expensive especially when it comes to stores um, you know, because with the stores you have, like your rack counters, you have the uh, racks that you have, you have the slate wall, if you have that, that you would have to actually install. And it comes in a four by eight foot panel for, and you need maybe two of those or sometimes you only could just use one, but then you have to have somebody be able to come out and install it. So you can be able to hang your merchandise on from the wall or, um, you also have your salesman racks and just all of that. A lot of that, uh, it, it actually costs and it's not, it's not cheap. You need mannequins. Mannequins are not cheap. Um, or even dress forms. Dress forms are, are a little bit more on a pricier side, especially for a good actual dress form. Um, as well as, you know, mirrors and chairs and sofas and desks and whatever, all that can add up at the end of the day so you just want to make sure that you kind of factor everything in when it comes to setting up your office so you know exactly what it is that you can um, go ahead and buy brand new which you can go and get at a thrift store or which you could go ahead and just diy because all of those things are gonna um, come into play and which kind of goes into both your office and your fixtures depending on the type of business that you have and then we'll also be discussing the budget, your price or your your pricing in the budget. But that should be something that you start at the very top of what you're when you deciding to um, open up the business. Is what is your budget looking like? How much do you have to actually work with when you're establishing a business? Is it you only have a small budget like a hundred dollars, or you have a bigger budget of a hundred thousand dollars? 
but that should be something that you work out with when you come to the park at the very discovery pay uh, discovery when you're deciding that you want to open up this business is what is your budget looking like and then also we're going to discuss um, the banking aspects of it what banking accounts do you want you should choose or what is going to be feasible for you based off of your bank and you wanted to see what bank offers what types of products or services that will be beneficial to you and your banking needs. Because that is definitely important. You don't want to um, have a bank and then as soon as you get a couple of dollars in there, they're taking it out because of the fees and everything else. So you definitely want to make sure that when you're making, when you're choosing a bank that it's beneficial to what your business needs are at this time. Um, I know certain banks offer certain things. So I um, have an account with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo for their business accounts require you to either have an account for their account. You either have to have, um, I think 7,500 in the account at all times, or you would have to swipe your debit card 10 times a month to avoid the service fee. Or you have an account option as to where you have to have $500 in the account every day. That might not be feasible for us, maybe a startup business. Um, I know also I have a business account with Bank of America. Bank of America requires that you, I think, swipe the debit card and make $250 worth of purchases for the month in order to avoid whatever their service fee is. So that may not be feasible for your business. You may not spend that kind of you know money or you may not have it to spend while you're in the process of trying to get your business established. Um, and, you know, Chase has their own requirements as well as BB&T, Fidelity, PNC, and then whatever other smaller banks that you have. So you definitely want to look at those things prior to um, establishing an account because you don't want to end up spending more money. And then also, if you do have to spend the fee, you want to make sure that that's a part of your budget as well, knowing that going in like, OK, well, I know starting out, I'm going to have. A ten dollar service fee. I'm gonna have thirty dollars that I'm gonna have to pay for my online um, domain uh, from the website aspect of it. There is another fee that I'm gonna have to have for that. All of that you wanna, of course, have a part of your bookkeeping and your budgeting when you go to um, go ahead and open up those doors because you wanna know exactly how much you spend. And then also a last thing is just making sure that when you do set up the business. It's going to be rough at first. I mean, because you're not going to open up the door for day one and you're not going to be making this tons of money. And I'm not, nobody's going to be waiting at the door or at the website waiting on you to open up that door and ring that bell like they do at the stock market. Like, ding, 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 come on in. Let's time to shop. Nobody's going to be sitting there waiting for you to open up your shop. So you definitely want to make sure that whatever you do, that you have a money, reserve money set aside for those few months to get you afloat. Um, a lot when you're doing a brick and mortar, most of the times that the um, companies that you rent from will allow you not to make a, um, a, a, mor a rent payment for like a month or two or three just so you can kind of start getting in the business. It just depends on what you negotiate. Um, and as well as if you're doing the brick and mortar, just make sure that you have, you know, two or three months worth of your fees set aside so that way you know that, okay, well, I already, I'm good on this aspect. I know I'm going to pay $30 for my website. I know I'm going to pay $10 for the uh, bank account or whatever it is and um, whatever other fees that are associated with your account. Also, um, for the, let's see, I said, opening up a, a clothing store so for the clothing store aspect of it you definitely if you can purchase your stuff locally that's great but you definitely want to uh factor in your shipping costs shipping costs is expensive when you're shipping in um i ordered some merchandise from california to come here and it was i think maybe i don't even know how many pieces it was but what they charged me, I don't feel that I should have paid for the merchandise. I think I got three pieces. They charged me like $15 or $20. I was like, this is ridiculous. I could have drove down there and got it for cheaper than that. You know, really not. But that's how I felt like that's a little bit too much. So those are the type of things you're going to have to consider. And then when it comes to your pricing, you definitely, definitely, definitely make sure you want to... Uh, Add all those costs, you're carrying all of that into your pricing. So you definitely want to have a strategy set 
in place on how you're going to price your your service and or your merchandise because it's the same you still have overhead that you have to maintain with this business and you want to make sure that you're not underpricing yourself but you don't want to overprice yourself as well so you definitely want to make sure that you do a few things when it comes to the pricing of your business i skipped over that but i definitely uh, wanted to have to discuss that as far as the pricing of your business you definitely want to make sure when you are pricing um your your product or your service that it's first of all comfortable to what you would pay for you know for the same service or product and that it's in line with what everybody else is paying um or you know what the other your competition is as well not to say that you have to you know lowball yourself or anything like that but you definitely don't want to price yourself out to where you're not getting any um sales or whatever bookings because you're way overpriced and they can get the service they don't even know you and they can get the service from somebody that they do know for uh you know a better price so you definitely want to make sure when you are pricing your uh, merchandise that you are pricing it fair um but this is just a kind of a a rundown of the type of stuff that we're going to be discussing throughout the weeks on our webinar um so each day or each webinar we will have for the videos is going to be a different topic and we will dive in deep on the t different topics so for the first topic that we're going to discuss we're going to be discussing the discovery and so basically all that is i'll just give you tips and tricks and a couple of other websites that you can go to to kind of help you with getting those types of things like um naming your business somebody who's going to do your logo for you if you need help with that you know things of that nature because those things are always important definitely you want to have a good um brand to start with you want to have something that looks appealing to to your market um also then we'll go into the the setup aspect of it so just stay tuned thanks for for tuning in to sip tea with tea <laughs> sip tea with tea sip tea with d <laughs> and this is your Think Like a Boss series. And thank you very much. You have a wonderful day.